So I thought with a topic like lending AI and digital discrimination, that would get us right in the heart of the media storm that's underway right now and invite everybody in to uh, uh, listen to the conversation. I got to tell you, it's probably not going to be as salacious as digital discrimination. Um, you know as part of your business that you're in the business of discerning between high risk and low risk. Be able to discern between those customers of where you're uh, uh, going to invest and where you're going to use your resources. Uh, so this is really about lending AI and being able to discern responsibly in this space. Uh, and so as you hear about some of these technologies today, you heard about blockchain earlier on, I'm going to be talking about AI and talk about all these technologies. Recognize that none of these things is an island. Right? None of these things is a silver bullet. They all work together to help you with your business because after all, it's the business challenge, the business solution that's there. And as I go across the country and talk with uh, leaders from across businesses, the small businesses, the large businesses, uh, we see that Canadian organizations of all shapes and sizes are undergoing a digital transformation to remain competitive and prosperous on the global scene of the um, marketplace. Uh, and you know, these are our four pillars, but we've seen four pillars across retail, across manufacturing, across telecommunications, finance. These are the four pillars that really are driving that change in how people do their business with technology. And the first focus that C-Suite has is around engaging customers. Customer is king. Engaging customers across a variety of channels and having con continuity of relationship across those channels. So starting off perhaps even with just a tweet, enticing that person to come into your office, carrying on on phone, online, across those channels. So having customer at the center and using those tools. Empowering employees. We've got a skill shortage across the board in all industries in Canada. We can't afford to lose our skilled employees, and so we need to empower them, give them the tools to make them successful and help them be productive in their environment. Optimize operations, getting more efficient, driving every last bit of value from the dollar. And then finally, transforming your products. And transforming your product, the people in this room, all of you are transforming financial services in Canada. So this is, this is kind of saying, John, like here, middle of the afternoon, my coffee hasn't kicked in, like this is, this is my bread and butter. I'm doing this stuff every day. And so yes, we do see that happening every day in financial services, as you try to do more, as you try to grow out. I heard earlier this morning on the regulator, how do I manage regulation? How do I make sure that OSFI is off my back and that I'm doing all the dotting the I's and crossing the T's? How do I make sure I keep the cybersecurity threat at bay and make sure that AML and uh, know your customer uh, app, 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 opportunities? Less so for the, uh, this community around the legacy systems modernization, but I think those interactions when we hear about open banking and how do we make that sucker work? How do we make our new modern systems work with those older systems and get those connected up? How do I connect up to those people that aren't comfortable going into the bank and changing the way that I have that relationship, providing new opportunities, providing new, uh, new vehicles? And then finally, just making sure that that cost of entry, that barrier to bringing in those customers is indeed as low as possible because we want to make this a friction-free experience. So we look at uh, these four areas and we find that artificial intelligence works across all of them. So the ability to augment and enhance your employee's ability, enhance your decision maker's capabilities, helps across these four pillars. We can have digital agents and bots that interact with uh, our customers when our uh, customer re uh, response reps aren't there. We can have targeted markets. Uh, we can have um, next best actions. We can have automate processes quickly and easily. And we can do our financial time analysis. And we see this stuff landing in a variety of different places. I think the first place we see this landing is the bot framework. And we've seen as we have these intelligent agents be able to share information quickly and easily, those common FAQs, have these interactions that are personalized, be able to reduce some of that burden of the call center on the communities, be able to ask people, answer their own questions quickly and easily with meaningful responses and not simply saying, hey, look at this FAQ. We have the ability to have that next best action. Well, how do I upsell that person? How do I make sure that my team members know exactly what's uh, uh, an opportunity there? And what are some of these new solutions that come out because of it? For our employees having better decision making, empowering our employees to be able to have better insight into that data that's out there. Clean up our data estates, right? When we look at uh, what's happening in the back end, we can find that data sometimes across a variety of different areas and we just can't get at that. AI helps us bring that data estate together and have a better sense of what assets are available to us. And then finally, the robotics uh, process automation. It's a big way to say that we see the world as all AI analysts, a citizen AI analyst. You know, Microsoft is in the business of democratizing tools. Think of how Excel changed your business. We're in the business of democratizing AI, making it silly simple 
for everybody across your organization to harness strong AI tools. And you might see that in an example in PowerPoint. I can have a picture of my doggos. It's not a presentation without doggos, right? I can have a picture of my doggos and I can go into PowerPoint and say, help me make this a better presentation. And AI will empower that. I can go across our, 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 our business tools to be able to do the same thing. And finally, using AI for that fraud detection, the uh, anti-money laundering, the know your customer uh, activities, be able to ensure that, look, we understand what's happening behind the scenes, be able to do that claims and fraud detection, bringing those tools within our environment. We see AI empowering the whole community going across the business. And one great example here is from Quarter Spot from New York. They're doing small business lending, opening up new lending vehicles, having a better understanding of the risk for businesses, understanding of, hey, here's how we can uh, better streamline our processes, cut lending costs by 83% right, by having these automated bots and agents move there. Now, of course, commercial lending, you're dealing with businesses. You think businesses and AI, not really that frightening. And you know, when I talk to people about AI across the Canadian marketplace, sometimes people get pretty leery. And it might be because Arnold Schwarzenegger just released another T-800 movie, and we think that AI is gonna start taking over the world, or maybe they saw the uh, Will Smith movie with the robots that are starting to uh, take over. People get worried about AI. And so it's important that we double click on this idea of AI and make sure that we understand that AI is not this Hollywood-worthy thing, it's really quite, mundane, doing automatic handwriting recognition, being able to do repeatable tasks. AI is all about empowering individuals. And so Microsoft is particularly bullish about the potential of AI to empower individuals, to help solve some of the tough problems in the world, to help uh, provide access to assets and opportunities to around the world. And so we have an AI for good program, which includes AI for healthcare, AI for displaced individuals, AI for humanitarian aid, AI for, um, for Earth to help uh, resolve some of the climate changes. And so we see very, very strong opportunity across the board to help developers and help those people that aren't developers build strong AI solutions because we do see it transforming industries. We do see it transforming society. And we've written out a manifesto online called uh, Future Computed Artificial Intelligence and Its Role in Society. So it's a great read, I invite you all to read on it. Uh, Cole's notes of this are three things. The first thing is those organizations and countries that get there first through the use of AI are going to be the most prosperous. And we have a leg up here in Canada. Look at what's happening in Montreal with the mathematics behind those engines. Strong mathematics research happening in the, in the Montreal community. But look at what's happening here at Mars and across Toronto the application of AI to business problems. So we see legal AI, we see accounting AI, we see financial services AI. We've got a leg up to be able to help ensure Canada's prosperity going forward. Two other pieces that are here, as we look to roll out AI, we need to be responsible in its use. And no one organization can be accountable for that. So we need partnerships. And so at Microsoft, we partnered with 80 organizations across North America, including the American Civil Liberties Union, to make sure that AI gets used appropriately. And it's also a partnership between industry and government. And so we're working with government, including the government regulator for financial institutions, around the use of AI uh, in these communities. Satya Nadella feels so strongly about AI and the future of the company that he put this in his book, Hit Refresh, and he suggested six key principles to guide AI. And think of these much along the same lines of Asimov's principles for AI. First and foremost, AI must be fair. We must guard against bias. The AI is only as good as the data that's put into it, and sometimes data has bias in it. We recommend the use of data sheets for data so that you understand the heritage and the context of the data and the errors that are there so that you make the right decisions. Can you imagine if we only used the Tom Sawyer as the text to train our language AI? There's a whole bunch of terminology in there that we'd never use today. And so we need to regard against that bias. We need to make sure we're fair. Reliable and safety, we need to make sure that it's consistent in its approach that it has the same outcome on a repeated basis. Privacy and security, we need to think of new ways to secure these systems. You've seen some of the facial recognition systems, if I take that hockey tape off my stick and put it on my face, I can become invisible for some of these uh, machine vision type algorithms. We need to make sure it's private and secure. Inclusiveness, we need to make sure that it reaches the whole community. 
if we've seen and looked at some of the facial recognition algorithms in there, it's woefully inaccurate for the broad community, the mosaic that is Canada. It works very well for a certain subset of the community, but it doesn't work well enough for the broad community. So we need to make sure it's inclusive. And the last two pieces, which are foundations, need to be transparent or explainable, be able to describe what the process does, and be able to have a human in the loop. So a human intervention to be able to uh, uh, make sure that it does what it's supposed to. And so as Satya really talked about those principles, we needed to embed them into our company. And so we've developed an AI responsible AI policy for the company, responsible AI standards for our development teams, and we have a review process. And so I am the uh, responsible AI lead for Canada. And that means that any use or implementation of AI in a sensitive use within Canada gets reviewed by my team. Now what's a sensitive use? It's the delivery of consequential services, education, healthcare, financial services. If it's delivering those services, our team needs to re review it if Microsoft is involved. Public safety, we need to review it if Microsoft's involved, or where there could be perception of infringing on human rights. Now this started off with the community in, in Redmond, so a US-centric view, and there was a thought that, hey, how does the US really understand the local dynamic that's happening in this other nation? And so we've distributed that capability, and my local team then has a Canadian-specific context around it to make sure that we deploy things responsibly. Why is this important? Well, we've seen that there's recent fear around, hey, some people felt that the decision-making that was done by a new lending vehicle wasn't really equitable across communities. This process strikes to make sure that there's a decision-making process behind it, that it's transparent, that people are informed of what's happening, and that these types of gotchas cannot happen in that community. Canada, being a leader in the world of AI, also want to be a leader in the world of putting guidance forward. Now, to be clear, there's 60 some odd documents being developed around the world to talk about AI governance, AI ethics, AI regulation. But uh, the CIO Strategy Council, so it's a joint group between Jim Balsilli uh, and uh, the former Federal Privacy Commissioner, Alex Benet, is now a standard setting body and they wanted to plant Canada's flag firmly ahead of the rest of the world and developed an AI ethics standard. And so this standard really describes governance processes and procedures that you can put in place in your organization to have proper oversight of reuse of AI for your customer facing or even internally facing activities. This is a free standard and you can download that today from uh, the CIO Strategy Council's uh, standard. It is a minimum viable product, so version one, uh, and so it will evolve with time, but Canada is again leading the world in, uh, in this direction. Privacy commissioners across Canada are interested in this work. They're interested in this work and they came into this work because of the work around inference. So the fact that when people came to a particular web property and you inferred that, hey, this is a, a young person coming in for insurance, I'm gonna charge them a little bit more for insurance so they thought they have to get involved. AI exacerbates that. Also involved with this is OSFI. And OSFI looking at, is there a need to talk about how AI is used in financial services? And so just starting to get off uh, the ground with those uh, types of conversations. This stuff has happened very, very rapidly. And you know, I've shouted a mile a minute here in the middle of the afternoon at you. And you're saying, hey, this AI stuff, I still think it's Arnold Schwarzenegger running from the future. How do I get informed about AI? Well, we've created the AI Business School, which is intended for business leaders. Uh, and so it really sets a very uh, high level overview of first off, what are key AI technologies? How do you instill an AI culture within your organization? and looks at finance, marketing, operations, about instilling uh, those, uh, that culture within your community. And then most importantly, how to implement responsible AI within your organization. What kind of governance structure can you put in place to make sure that you have the correct oversight on those tool sets? AI is going to revolutionize the way that we work across all segments and perhaps most importantly across financial services and the lending segment. Be able to have that visibility and insight into your business, into the data that's there to assist and augment, complement your employees in the work that they do. But it's important that AI be developed responsibly, that we are deliberate in its approach. And these tools, these guidance and structures will help us be successful and seize those opportunities to support all Canadians and those people we do business with abroad. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time this afternoon. Thank you.